Transfigured on the mount, O Christ our God, revealing thy glory to thy disciples as far as they could bear it. Let thy Hello. My name is Father Athanasios Heros, and I'm the pastor here at the Transfiguration of Our Savior Greek Orthodox Church in Florence, South Carolina, and I'm your host for Be Transfigured Ministries. Here at Be Transfigured, as we say, we invite you to live a new life in Christ. We feature our sermons and our Bible studies and other special events in the life of the church. We do it to inspire you to join us living a new life in Christ. I hope you'll join us. I'll be back in a moment after this video to share some information about our ministry. We have the words from St. Paul, his letter to the Hebrews, which begins today, Brethren, obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. And then we have the story in the Gospel where Jesus is teaching in the temple, uh, the synagogue, he's teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he chooses to heal a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And instead of being full of joy and praising God, the rulers of the synagogue instead yelled at Jesus and the woman. And so Jesus' response to them is he calls them hypocrites. He says, don't you on the Sabbath take your animals and you release them and you feed them and you give them water even on the Sabbath? He says, and this woman who is a son of Abraham, would you not at least release her on the Sabbath? And the gospel says that his words put them to shame. And then again, I hear the words of St. Paul, obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. My brothers and sisters, today is the Feast of St. Nicholas, one of the greatest fathers of our church, a bishop of our church who defended the truth of God so fervently that according to the tradition at the First Ecumenical Council, he actually slapped the opposition across the side of the face. That is how firm he was in the truth of Christ. And we know that story, but some may not know that he was actually at that point then removed from the council meeting because the fathers at that time did not believe that it was appropriate behavior to smack someone's side of the face in the middle of a council meeting. I probably would have agreed with them. But those same fathers that evening saw a vision of the Panagia and Christ on the side of St. Nicholas. And the next morning they restored him into the council. And he is known in Greek, Kanona Pisteos, the, we could say, the benchmark of faith. The thing that we test our faith against, the canona pistios, the canon of belief. And so we are commemorating his memory and his fervent defense of the truth today. And the church brings us this reading from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. On every day a bishop is commemorated. Obey those who rule over you. He's not speaking here of the political authorities. He's speaking of the church. 
and be submissive, for they watch over your souls as those who must give an account. My brothers and sisters, I cannot tell you how often I have conversations with people about important things. And ultimately the conversation turns to, well, Father, you have to tell them what to do. You have to tell them whatever the case might be. It happened just yesterday. And I often reflect, the person who's asking me to tell someone what to do, many times in their own life, they don't do what I say to do. And now I'm not speaking about what I say, but what the church teaches. We are in the Christmas fast. And it is a season in our society that has become so overscheduled, so chaotic with the holiday parties at work, the holiday parties at school, the theater productions, the civic productions, the lighting of the Christmas tree downtown. And of course, there's the shopping. We have to go shopping. We have to get all of these presents. Day in and day out in this month of December, we find ourselves panicking that we're not going to have enough time to get everything done for Christmas. And then we even use the excuse, I can't come to church because I'm just too busy right now getting everything ready for Christmas. And yet the church tells us, fast, increase your prayers, increase your reading of scriptures, take care of the poor. Remember that the poor are more important than yourself. And so we are faced, my brothers and sisters, right here in 2015 with a choice. We can obey the church and spend the next couple, three weeks preparing for Christmas in the orthodox way, in fasting and in prayers and in caring for the poor. Or we could listen to society and what's important. We can allow the society to tell us how to live our life. And I know that many of us will get so exhausted in these next three weeks that by the time Christmas comes, we're too tired to celebrate. By the time Christmas comes, we're done with Christmas. And attending the Divine Liturgy, if we choose to, to attend the Divine Liturgy for Christmas, is simply nothing more than an obligation that we have on our schedule as good Orthodox Christians. Well, we have to go to church for Christmas. We go home, we have our feast, the next morning we wake up with our presents, and that afternoon the tree is out at the curb already waiting for the garbage. That's not obeying the church, my brothers and sisters. If we heed the advice of St. Paul today, then following the church, obeying the church, knowing that the church is accountable to God. When the church gives us an instruction on how to live and we are obedient to the church, that always is blessed by God. If the church has led us astray, we, the priests, the bishops, we are the ones who are accountable to God for leading people one direction or another. And this is the urging of St. Paul. Think about the other people in our life that we put our trust in. We go to the doctor. 
Most of us, although not all of us, most of us will go to the doctor and he will give us advice based on his education and on his training and on his personal experience. And then we will take that advice and we walk out of the door with a choice. If I want to be better physically, if I want to have better health, I will listen to the doctor. And some of us, and you know who you are, will say, <laughs> doctors don't know what they're doing. Thank you for the advice, doctor. I now have to pay you the bill, but I know better. Me, you know, the dishwasher. I know what I'm doing, doc. And I know some of us live that way. But when we put it in that context, it almost sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It almost sounds ridiculous to go to the doctor to receive the advice from the trained physicians, from those who in their own experience, not just their own personal experience, but the experience of hundreds of physicians and doctors and researchers across the centuries have given them all of these wonderful opportunities for healing, we would think it was ridiculous if we did not obey the doctors. The doctors who, do they care about our soul or do they care more about their pocketbooks? And then there's the church with 2,000 years of experience. Not just dozens of holy fathers and mothers, but thousands of holy fathers and mothers in their own life experience who have realized and perfected the way of life that is going to heal us spiritually And yet we'd rather listen to society. We'd rather listen to the guy on the street corner tell us how many flat screen TVs we need for our house. We would rather listen to society rather than the church. But society, my brothers and sisters, does not answer to God for our souls. They are not worrying about our souls. The society is worried only about their own agenda, the economy, and their own wealth. And then it brings me back to the gospel again today. Here is Jesus Christ, God himself, teaching in the synagogue with all of the experience and all of the knowledge of the truth and he turns to this woman and he heals this woman. And what is their response? Shame on you. What's our reaction going to be? We have a choice today. Will we start to obey the church? knowing that the church has our soul in mind and nothing else? Will we start to live the life of the church in these few weeks to prepare for Christmas? Or will we walk out these doors and everyone has the free choice to do whatever we want? Are we going to walk right out these doors and put our trust in what is important by what society is teaching us instead of the church. It's your choice today, my brothers and sisters. No one else's. You can either call the church crazy. You can either accuse the church of not knowing what it's talking about, as the leaders did in the synagogue when they confronted Christ. Or you can listen to the advice of St. Paul, the great St. Paul, and 2,000 years of life experience of the church and obey the church as those who have watch over our souls and who will give an account. Today is your choice, my brothers and sisters. 
Take it. Take responsibility for your choice today and spend the next two and a half weeks preparing for Christmas, not in the society fashion, where we panic about whether or not our, direct, our, our decorations are finished, but spend the next two and a half weeks in the orthodox way of preparing, fasting, increasing our prayers, increasing the reading of scriptures, taking care of the poor, scheduling a confession. If we should panic about anything, it's not decorations, it's whether or not our soul is prepared to meet Christ. That should be the panic that we have this season. And then St. Paul finishes with this exhortation to the people. He says, pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably. Now listen to this. He says, but I especially urge you to do this. Obey your rulers as those who watch over our souls. Glory to God for all things. Well, I'm back. And I hope this video was an inspiration to you. I hope it helps you live a new life in Christ. Please share our message of hope with your friends and family and invite others to live a new life in Christ. Find more information about Be Transfigured Ministries by joining us on our website at liveanewlifeinchrist.org. You can also find many of our videos on the Orthodox Christian Network, our partners at myocn.net. As we say at Be Transfigured, until next week, God bless you, and don't forget to live a new life in Christ. Be Transfigured is a production of the Transfiguration of Our Savior Greek Orthodox Church in Florence, South Carolina, and presented by the Orthodox Christian Network. Contributions and support of this ministry may be sent to Be Transfigured, 2990 South Cashua Drive, Florence, South Carolina, 29501, or online at our website at www.liveanewlifeinchrist.org.